Yes. Well, this morning, Pastor Marlene asked me to come back. Some of you might remember me. Uh, Katerina von Bora Luther, uh, the wife of Martin Luther. And I have to say, um, being the wife of Dr. Luther, I never read scripture in the sanctuary before. Um, this is always new to me. So I don't feel worthy to read the gospel, but as Dr. Luther said, we are a priesthood of all believers. And I bring to you the word of the gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, it is a pleasure to be with you again uh, this year. And... I know that I've been told that there's some young people um, listening through this camera thing that Pastor Marlene tried to explain to me the last two years, but I know there's people out there this year, so I can see you, I don't know what the camera thing's about, but they tell me that uh, in the midst of this continuing plague, you can actually worship at home when you need to for your safety. So I understand some of you are at home, some of you are inside mass, and uh, there was going to be some outside, but um, the weather's not looking too favorable for that. But for those of you who are younger, young at heart, um, I can't give it to you, but I have a piece of paper here, uh, a coloring sheet that I can make sure you get later if you want a coloring sheet. And, um, this is actually a coloring sheet of Dr. Luther's rose or seal. And you have a banner over here that I'm going to show you. This is for the young and the older and young in heart, because I don't know if you know what this means. And Dr. Luther, my husband, did this for a reason, so that um, when you saw it, you could remember your faith. And you'll notice at the very center is the cross, because at the very center of your faith is the cross of Jesus Christ, Jesus dying for you. And as we know, um, as we know, Jesus died because of the love of Christ. And so the heart surrounds the cross. And that's the heart of the gospel, is that you are freed by the cross and you have eternal life because of the cross and the love of God. And the purity of Jesus is shown by that white rose. And the blue behind it reminds you of the heavens, the gift to you, the salvation that you have. And it is everlasting. So there's a gold ring around the outside that you can see to remind you that it is an everlasting gift. And so I hope that that helps, especially the young, but even maybe some of the older members here to know a little bit more about your faith. Every time you see uh, that symbol of faith, you might be able to remember it. And remember the seeds of your faith, the importance of your faith. But today, for uh, the older adults, I wanted to talk a little bit about freedom because our gospel lesson says that we are free. 
Well, Dr. Luther wrote something about freedom as well. And just to put this in a setting for you, I don't know if you realize it, but this was something that my husband wrote in 1520. Now that's three years before I met him. So I wasn't around when he wrote this, but I did get a chance to read it very early on and it definitely shaped my faith. And it's called The Freedom of a Christian. But Dr. Luther wrote this when he was facing excommunication. Now, I think some of you know some of my story. I told you it a little bit before, but if you don't remember my story, you can ask me another time. I'll be around. But if you remember, Dr. Luther had posted something for discussion in 1517, um, the 95 Theses. And after they were posted, well, they also got printed. And a lot of us were reading them. And we're trying to understand what this meant for us. And in the process, Dr. Luther got the attention of the Pope. Well, in the process of getting the attention of the Pope, between the 95 Theses and some of his other writings, Dr. Luther had gotten himself into some trouble with the Roman Church. And if you don't remember, what happened was he ended up being uh, threatened with excommunication. So as he's writing about the freedom of a Christian, I want you to know that he's already received the official notice from the Pope that he is going to be excommunicated if he won't recant. And so as he writes this, he's trusting these words, but he's also knowing the fear of being no longer part of the church. And I myself understand that fear. Um, as most of you know, in 1523, a group of us nuns escaped from our convent. But if you left the convent in our time, and especially since we left and went uh, help with the help of Dr. Luther and some other Lutherans, we were also facing excommunication. And excommunication meant that you no longer receive the sacrament of communion, which we will share together today. But if you didn't have the sacrament of communion, as Dr. Luther reminds us in the small catechism, you don't have the gift of life and salvation. The forgiveness of sins, life and salvation comes through communion. And without that, we were not assured of our salvation. But we trusted in the things that Dr. Luther was writing because he looked at it and he said, it's not the church that gives you salvation, it's Jesus' death and resurrection. And that leads me right into this freedom of a Christian piece. In the freedom of a Christian, Dr. Luther said that as Christians, we are free um, completely. We are lords of all. At the same time as Christians, we are servants of all and not free at all, but servants of everyone. He puts it a little more eloquently than I do, so you might want to read it one of these days. But Dr. Luther really made the statement clear from scripture that we are made free and we're made free because Jesus died for us and it is our faith that saves us. It's not something that we do. We can't earn our salvation. It is the free gift that comes because Jesus died on the cross for us. And my husband believed that firmly. Even up until his death, he clung to that cross of Christ. And in being part, being made free by Christ, we were made part of the priesthood of all believers. 
We were all made priests. We were all made kings. And that means we are Lord of all. We are free from sin. We are free from death. We are free to do what we want. Except we are also made the priesthood of all believers. And in being made priests of all believers, we are called to be exactly what Jesus asked us to be. Jesus calls us to joyfully serve our neighbors. We are supposed to be little Christ. That's what Christian means after all. You are in fact little Christ. And what did Christ do? He served and loved his neighbors. And that's what we do. That's what we're called to do. And if you serve and love your neighbors, you do it joyfully because you already have received the love of Christ. You already have received everything that you can imagine. But you don't do it because you have to. You serve because you gladly want to share this love and you want to be a little Christ to your neighbors. So in fact, as Dr. Luther argued, we are, as Christians, we are lords of all, completely free. As Christians, we are servants of all, called to love and serve our neighbors. It is certainly a hard thing to remember. It's certainly a hard thing to live. But by God's grace and through Paul's writings and teachings, I pray that you learn to know that you are freed from sin and death and that you are most certainly the children of God. But I also pray that you joyfully respond to God's love and willingly serve your neighbor in any way that you can. Throughout our lives, my husband and I tried our best to serve our neighbors, to love those around us and to share the power of God's word. May you, who are following in the footsteps of Christ, who are learning and reading the words of Paul, and who are filled with the hope of the gospel, may you go out and willingly and joyfully serve your neighbor, not just today, but in all times, because you are free to do so. Amen.